J.C. Peretz, founder of Eagle Bay Capital. He's a money manager, technical analysis practitioner. Joins us every Thursday. He's also a market five maven. J.C., we got one messy market here. How, how are you interpreting this trading action as of late? I mean, it's, you know, same, uh, you know, same thing I've been telling you guys over the last few weeks. You know, prices are still below overhead supply. You know, there's no reason to be long the major averages, um, you know, going into this resistance. You know, you either want to wait for it to clear or, um, you know, wait for some consolidation well below current levels. But, you know, while we're in no man's land, uh, you know, it's a chop that. So, you know, it shouldn't be surprising that, you know, we're getting, you know, this, this whippy action. Uh, you know, rallied yesterday morning, got killed, came back at the end. You know, futures got killed this morning, came back. I mean, this is your standard, um, you know, choppy sort of market environment. So, um, you know, we're fortunate to be uh, out of it. I I got to ask you about, you know, I know you, you know, have followed the bonds for a long time. And just looking at the 30-year, I mean, I see it's bouncing back today. But someone seems absolutely convinced that, you know, there's an Something's going on in interest rates here. I mean, maybe it's just a crowded bond trade here. TLT is uh, falling off a map. Uh, the 30-year bond at the Board of Trade has recovered. It's just falling off a map. Preferred stocks got killed over the last couple of days. I mean, what are these people seeing about interest rates that, uh, that we're not? Um, I think it was clear. I told you guys treasury bonds were short um, in, in mid-March. Um, you know, we got very aggressively short. It, it, was, it was a very clean trade. I mean, when you look at TLT, the reason that we had a target in TLT of about 132 and change was because those were the 2012 highs. So those were our TLT targets. So if you recall, in January, we hit those targets, and I said, that's it, no more. And, uh, you know, we got out of the bond long trade, and uh, – TLTs continued. Uh, they went up another, uh, you know, four or five points, and then they got killed, right? So on the March rally, the early March rally, when prices, you know, kind of had that bounce, they got right back up to those 2012 highs, which was that 132.5. And, a half. and uh, you know, I told you guys that was the short. Um, you know, that, that kickback to the, to the real resistance, you have bearish momentum divergences. I thought it was a great short. And, um, you know, Rarely does the market give us such clean levels, um, you know, but the, the 10 year at one at 184, you know, like I told you guys, that was the level. As long as interest rates stayed above 184, which were the not only the October lows, but where rates really started getting going in February when they got back above that level, that's the level that held uh, throughout late March, early April. So I said, you know, as long as we're above that, bonds are short. And, um, you know, sure enough, uh, bonds have gotten slaughtered, so I think it's great. Um, but uh, you know, my 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 upside target on yields was 2.2 percent, and that was hit yesterday. So um, at this point, what do we do with bonds? Um, I have no idea. So we're, uh, <laughs> well, we're out I, of that trade. Uh, I, I I don't I, I don't re- I don't really know what happens now. Nice call and nice trade on those bonds there, JC. Um, I did notice a tweet that you had the other day because we've actually on the show the last few days, not sure if you've been listening, but we've been talking about money coming out of crowded trades. It kind of started with Apple, and you know, Apple had a pretty decent report, but it was overextended and, and obviously crowded, and money came out of that off after that report. And we saw it also on Disney the other day, and I noticed that you were actually talking about contemplating a short on Disney. I'm wondering if you did get short Disney, and uh, if you did, why, why look? at Disney as, at the short side. Yeah, we're not contemplating anything. We're short Disney very nice. aggressively. Nice. Um, we're short. Um, it's very, yeah, no, it's very simple. Um, it's the exact same trade as biotechnology on March the 20th. You guys recall, um, you know, yep. we talked about it on the show with you guys. You know, that was, uh, you know, it was a very crowded trade and on March the 20th, I think like Biogen came out like, was up 50 points. Cancer or something. I don't know. But they, they gapped up. They gapped up higher. And then it was a Friday. I'll never forget it. It was a Friday. They gapped up higher, XBI. Um, and then it got crushed throughout the entire day, right? So yep. we had upside targets in XBI. And on that day, it exceeded those targets and then melted all day. So beautiful entry point. And obviously, you know, um, we know what happened after that. Um, in terms of Disney, it's the exact same thing. 
So they came out yesterday with, um, you know, their earnings or whatever. Um, not yesterday, the day before yesterday. Um, yep. Uh, Tuesday. They came out with their earnings or whatever. Supposedly they were great. You know, the media goes crazy or everybody loves Mickey Mouse and Disney. So it's great <laughs> headlines and everything like that. And um, it, it, it melted all day. So, and not only that, so it, it's the same thing as the biotech uh, uh, short because it hit our target. So if you take the 261.8% Fibonacci extension from the September to October decline, the, the 261.8% extension is 111.70. So we exceeded that on the open and then melted all day to close back below it. So, and, and momentum put in a bearish divergence. So there's your entry right there. Uh, you know, we were fortunate because yesterday uh, Disney, got the pop. Disney uh, you know, hit pretty bad. I mean, it's not biotech. You're not going to get the beta that you're going to get in a biotech. You know, you're not going to get back-to-back 6% down days or whatever it is um, in Disney. Disney's like arguably like the most boring stock ever. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a much lower beta name. Um, doesn't mean that we can't make money in it on the short side, but the risk reward is very well defined. You know, if we get back above that extension at 111.70, there's no reason to be short. Um, but as long as we're below that, we could be ex- very, very aggressively short, and we are. Um, I think it's under 100, and that's what we'll be coming. JC, where is your target on this one? Under 100. Under 100. Okay, so you're going to hold on. Under 100. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll be covering around, yeah, around 99, 100 we'll be covering. Great, great setup there too. Also, just talking about, I'm talking about you know crowded trades, and I'm wondering if this Alibaba trade wasn't a little bit crowded on the downside. Well, not even crowded, but everybody just hating on the stock. It had that breakdown through key support there two days ago at eighty dollars, but kind of reversed on the day there, and then just hung out yesterday ahead of the report. And now it comes out with an okay earnings report, but I think everybody hated it on the street. And it seems like the street has just been wrong lately. So at least from sentiment perspective, it seems like when the hate is on for something, and it comes out with an okay report. Report. Here you are. It's popping eight dollars on its earnings report. Here is this another one that you know maybe it was just too crowded and everybody hated it for too long. Yeah, you know I gave this a shot. Um, you know when we broke below the uh, the October lows and got back above it, we you know we gave it a shot on the long side. We wound up getting stopped out. Um, you know it didn't work out for us. But I, I got to tell you, you know the fact that you know I love when 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 markets gap up above all resistance right so in this case you got a ton of resistance over the last few months just under 88 and based on the bid and the ask it looks like we're going to gap above that i love that setup to me because it basically you know takes care of all the all the you know all all the all the hard work that it's going to be that that it would have to do under normal circumstances you know throughout the normal trading session it does that in one shot, and um, you know a lot of times when you see that, it's it's almost like a gap and go. So you'll gap above it, and it'll just go. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen here. It could very easily just open up at 88 and then just melt all day. Um, you know, I have no idea. But I would I would say that if it if it, if it hangs out above that 88 and doesn't uh, and doesn't start falling back below that broken you know that 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 resistance, I would say that's extremely uh, you know bullish for sure. Okay, uh, out of the chat here, I think we've talked about... I'm, uh, I'm not in it, though. I, I, don't, I don't know it yet. Uh, on the, in the chat room, I, th- I think ahead. we've talked about Palladium with you, uh, and there's a stock related to uh, Palladium, SWC. Can't say I'm too familiar with that one. Uh, do you have your charts up in front of you, JC? Uh, had a nice pop yesterday. It's Stillwater Mining Company Common Stock, and we'll talk about Palladium, and then we'll talk about the gold market as well. Yeah, um, I think it's a no touch. You know, both Palladium and Stillwater. You're, 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 it was a nice move yesterday, but it's running into a downward sloping 200 day moving average. So um, this is tough, man. You know, I, I wouldn't touch this thing. No, no, no way. Um, this is uh, this is probably dead money at best for a while until until prices get above that that 200 day and that 200 day starts to slope up, but. You know, with, with prices below a downward sloping 200-day momentum in a bearish range, um, yeah, no, no thanks. Okay. What about oil, JC? And we know you were bullish here. We give you some props there because you were all over it when it started to rally there in the mid 40s and the lower 50s. Now that we're trading way up here at 61 dollars, what are you saying on oil? Has it gone too far now, and is it ready to pause? What are you doing on oil? 
You know, we, we got we got in this, as you guys know, uh, in March when we got back above the January lows, you know, around 47, 48. I mean, that was the entry. Um, you know, if you missed this whole run, you know, um, I mean, that was such a clean entry uh, from a risk reward standpoint anyway. Um, you know, I still think it's got legs. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, I think we could probably see 70 bucks, you know, for, for more aggressive short-term traders. Um, there's a very clean uptrend from those uh, March lows when we originally got in. Um, you know, if we break that uptrend line, which is also resistance from February and was resistance again last month, you know, call it, you know, 58, 70, 59 ish, um, 58 and a half. You know, we break those levels, then uh, I would start to get much more defensive and not be in it. Um, we're not in it right now, full disclosure. We took our profits and, um, you know, we, we were in the call option. So, um, you know, we were in pretty aggressively. So we took our profits. I'm not in it, uh, but I, I still think it's kind of like. Uh, moving on here, uh, JC, uh, I think we talked to you after the Twitter debacle here. I know you've been a fan of the social media stocks. Uh, just looking at the social media uh, ETF, SOCL here. Getting back in anytime soon? Or I know you, I know you had your profit target, exceeded it a little bit. Uh, looking to get back in on the long side. Nah, um, <laughs> you got a bearish momentum divergence. Prices, prices, uh, price targets hit. Um, nah, I wouldn't touch this at all. And you know what? I, like I told you guys on the Twitter, I think it's dead money. Um, and sure enough, it not only has it been dead money, it's continued to fall. And you got all these people bottom fishing for no reason at all. There's zero reason to bottom fish in this name. I think it's dead money at best. You know, any strength, and we're going to see strength. I'm sure. You know, you're going to get a move. You know, into the low 40s or something like that. I'm sure at some point. Um, I'd say that um, I think this is now a broken stock. Um, we want nothing to do with this. Zero. And uh, Tesla, I mean, you talk about a messy-looking chart here. This thing I had a big run-up into earnings. Decent earnings. They popped it off it, but now it had it come back down. Uh, can you make heads or tails out of this Tesla chart? Yeah, you know, speaking of dead money, um, you know, yeah, there's no reason to be in this. Uh, you got prices below a flat 200-day moving average. That's the, the the sheer definition of a lack of trend. Um, you know, I know people are obsessed with it because, um, you know, as 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 individual traders, for example, you know, we have flaws as as humans, and one of those flaws is, you know, the fact that we we need to convince ourselves that we understand a given story in order to be in a particular stock and. You know, Tesla's a very easy story to tell and a very easy story to digest, you know, um, you know, in terms of the cars and whatnot. So, uh, you know, people are obsessed with it for, for that reason and others. But, um, you know, it's dead money. Anybody in this has been, you know, getting chopped around all year. And um, I, I think that that's, um, you know, I think that's well-deserved because, you know, your prices are with a flat 200-day moving average. And when you see that, you know, what are, you know that's, that just causes headaches. It just creates headaches. There's no trend. Um, it's not going up. It's not going down. It's just a mess. Um, and when you see these flat 200 period moving averages, you know you really want to stay away from these. And um, we're we're seeing why. Um, so you you couldn't pay me enough to be in this. JC, I want to ask you? You've been moving your money around. Now you're short Disney. You've moved out of obviously some of the social stocks and stuff. Where where what other trades are you eyeing up, or what other trades have you recently put on? Because you've been making some great calls lately. So we want to pick your brain into the next trade that you've got, or the next trade you're eyeing, or the next trade that you just put on. Oh, thanks, guys. Um, you know what I like? I like wheat futures. Um, I, I really, really like wheat futures down here for a lot of reasons. You know, we hit some key Fibonacci levels to the downside. Um, you know, you, you can you can argue that there's an uptrend line going back to 2007 up here at these levels. Uh, the commercial hedgers, you guys know I do a lot of sentiment work. Commercial hedgers, smart money. I mean, these guys are loading the boat uh, on wheat. There's an ETF. It's not very liquid. W-E-A-T, the tracks, um, you know, wheat futures. Um, I, I Obviously, you know, you, you in, a, in an ETF like that, um, you know, you, it's going to be costly rather than being in, uh, in the futures. But... Um, I think that this is interesting. I think that we can get a, a decent squeeze. And I got to tell you, man, if, if, if we futures take out this morning's highs, um, you know, we could really, really be off to the races. You know, this thing could really squeeze. I don't know if it's necessarily going to happen today. Yesterday had a big move. So I think it's probably um, best to let things digest a little bit. Um, 
you know, I'm looking at natural gas. I'm not in it. Um, you know, you got inventories today at 1030. But um, I think it looks I think it looks good. You know, we've been we, Ooh, we broke out of a downtrend line from the January highs. I thought those January lows were a, a big level. We're now above it. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, no, good. I'm just looking uh, look at my chops here. Yeah, this, uh, yeah you guys hear me first? Yep, we got you. We got you good here. I'm just looking at these uh, natural gas futures here and seeing, uh, you know, that had the big move up, the consolidation, and then you got three, four highs in the same area here. Uh, looks uh, looks raring to go there as well. Um, all right, JC, uh, it was great having you on. We love your input on the markets. JC Peretz, he's the founder of Eagle Bay Capital, money manager, technical analyst, practitioner, always sticking to his same technique. The 200-day 200 moving, 200 moving average and sentiment, putting them in, all in there, making some great calls on the market. Thanks, JC. Have a great trading day. We'll be back with you next Thursday. You too. Thanks again for having me, guys. Thanks, JC.